we, uh, as you continue to turn and get there, before we talk about that uh, in detail, let me tell you a little bit more about uh, why it was necessary on this particular occasion to build a wall. The fact is that this was the beginning of Israel returning back to Palestine after being uh, in exile for 70 years because they were sent there by God to punish them. Yeah. God had sent the prophets on multiple occasions and warned them that if they didn't change their wicked ways, uh, that judgment would come. But just as today people get to a certain point because they haven't seen God bring judgment, they think he never will. All right. But Peter tells us that God is not slack concerning his promises. He's long-suffering because he does not want that any should perish, that any should have to suffer. But make no mistake about it, God will do whatever he says he will do. Yes. Amen. So uh, the Hebrews, the, the Jews, found out the hard way that God means what he says. <laughs> If you know the Bible, you know that Jerusalem, which was the capital, was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. Uh -huh. The temple was looted and all of the sacred items were taken by Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon. The temple was actually burned and destroyed. Yeah. Solomon's glorious temple was destroyed. And the walls were knocked down. What the walls symbolized then, and what they symbolize today in terms of this discussion, is God's protection. So to the extent that the walls had been broken down, what it represented was a broken down relationship. Mm. So folks, when I talk about what is necessary to rebuild the walls, what I'm talking about is how we build a broken relationship. Mm. All right. How we come back under the ambent or the protection of God's love and his favor. Nehemiah actually was in the second wave of Jews that came back, the first wave of Jews that came back. Uh, can't think of the, the name. One of the persons, actually, maybe he was in the first wave, but he came back to build the walls. But the first wave of Jews that came back actually came back to try to build the temple, to lay the foundation. Actually, the first wave was Zerubbabel, hmm. an interesting name. And I believe Joshua, the high priest, they came back and they laid the foundation, the cornerstone of the temple. The temple symbolize God's presence in the midst of the people. Mm -hmm. So the temple had been devastated and destroyed roughly 700, rather 70 years prior. So the thing that they needed to do was to build that temple and once the temple was built, to build a wall of protection around it. Now that's significant and that's symbolic in the sense that once we have reestablished our relationship with God, we've got to put measures in place to protect that relationship. Amen. Yes. Amen. We cannot be reckless and haphazard because at the end of the day, we'll end up in the same place. Yes. If we do not hold the things of God sacred and important, precious, and if we do not deem them worthy of being protected. Yes. I say that because... Sometimes, folks, it comes down to where we're hanging out mm. right. and who we're hanging out with. All right. Boy, I don't mean to step on anyone's toes. But you did. This morning mm -hmm. or this afternoon, but if you can't say amen, then... Say out. <laughs> so let's begin our reading because now we understand what is significant about building a wall. It's about rebuilding a relationship, a broken down relationship. It is about coming back within the protection of God. Fact of the matter is that you can't live any kind of way and think that God is gonna bless you. Mm, amen. 
Now, I know that there is a philosophy. I know that there is a popularized teaching in the church that would say otherwise. But I'm here to announce that there are consequences yes. Mm -hmm. to how you live your life. But what is also true is that when God uh, brings judgment, God is a God of restoration. Yes, he is a God of renewal. He is a God of second chances. Thank you, Lord. He is a God of revival. Yes. Aren't you glad? Yes. So glad. So glad. That he doesn't write us off. So glad. The many, many, many times that we have disappointed him the many, many times that we have fallen short yes. of his glory. Yes. Aren't you happy that God is always looking toward restoration yes. Yes. So happy. in our lives? Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so this is a picture here of restoration and Thank rebuilding you, of Thank the wall. Lord. Verse 6, are you there? Wonderful. Of chapter 4, yes. the book of Nehemiah. Verse 6, are you there? I am there. Amen. Amen. So we built the wall, and the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people, now, I've got seven things that, that I want to tell you is important if you're trying to rebuild a wall. If you're trying to do anything of significance, this first observation is very important. What does he say about the people? They had a mind to work. Mm. Look, what's in your mind or what's not in your mind pretty much determines your destiny. Right. Uh, and another part of scripture, it says, as a man thinketh what? So is he. Yes, yes. Pastor, we can't get anything accomplished unless the people have a mind Amen. to work. Amen. Amen. Because when the people put their mind to do something, Amen. something will be done. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Sometimes the people have a mind to complain. Sometimes the people have a mind to brag. Sometimes the people have a mind to do things that are not right. But when the people of God have a mind to work, work will be done. Mm -hmm. So this first thing that I want to call to your attention is that if you want to get anything done in the kingdom of God, in your personal walk, yes. In your personal relationships, on your job, yes. if you want to move ahead, yes. whatever it is that, that you're trying to accomplish, it starts with, as the saints used to say, a made-up mind. Mm -hmm. yes. The question I have this afternoon is, do you have a made-up mind? Do you have a mind to work? Okay. Oh, you cannot have a true relationship with God and not have a mind to work. Amen. Amen. If you were in Sunday school this morning, we talked about that, right? Mm. Yes. Isaiah uh, saw the Lord in the year that the king Uzziah died. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And, and, and Isaiah said, Lord, if you need someone, That's right. That's right. here I am. Send me. Isaiah had a mind to work. Paul was a zealot. He was a fanatic. He persecuted the church. He was responsible for killing people. But when he encountered the Lord on the road to Damascus, and the Lord arrested him, and he knocked him down, and when he got up, he said, Lord, who are you, and what will you have me to do? You cannot have an encounter with the true and living God. You cannot be filled with the Spirit and not have a mind to work. Amen. Mm. Too many people come to church saying, let's see what the pastor has worked up for Sunday. Too many people come to the house of God as consumers. And we need a little more producers. All right now. If we had just a few 
more producers. We could get some stuff done if the people had a mind to work. All right. Are you hearing me? We hear you. The wall was built, but it started with the fact that some people said, you know what? Something needs to get done, and you know what? It ain't gonna get done if I'm sitting around here pointing at other people and looking at other people and accusing them of not doing. I'm gonna do what I can do. Amen. Thank you. That is all that the Lord requires of you and me is that you do what you can do. And you know what? You can't fool God. He knows what you can do. That's right. And He knows what you can't do. Amen. Do what you can do. Amen. Make up in your mind that I am gonna be a part of the solution. Have a mind to work. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Work. Amen. Thank you, Father. Work. Thank you, Father. Work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. People had a mind to work. Verse 7. But it came to pass that when Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabian, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were what? Happy. Very, very, okay. They were very angry. Yeah. King James says, very wroth. And I just want you to know that if you're trying to do something significant in your life, if you're trying to build something, one of the things that you need to start out with is an understanding that everybody is not gonna be excited about Amen. your progress. Amen. In fact, in fact, there are going to be people who are upset that you are now living for the Lord. Mm. Mm. That he has brought you from the darkness to the marvelous light. They're going to try to entice you to come on back. You know that. You can't stick with that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> mm. wow. Listen. Yes. Your enemy... And who's your enemy? Your enemy is anyone who doesn't want to see you go forward. Mm. Amen. You say, wait a minute, that, well, that's, Amen. that's my girlfriend. Anyone. Uh, no, no, that's your enemy. Mm. Anyone Amen. that doesn't want to see you move forward in the purpose and the plan of God for your life is your enemy. Amen. Or your opponent. Amen. We won't use such harsh language. <laughs> And the reason why that's important, if you know the whole story about this guy, Sam Ballad, when he first heard that they were building the temple, he sent a message to Ezra and to the others saying, hey, listen, you guys are going to build the temple. We're like, we're God's people. We want to help you. We're friends. And, 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 and Ezra and them said, no, we got this. It just doesn't concern you. You got to know who really is for you and who's yeah. not. And if everybody that's saying they want to help you don't necessarily want to help you. Amen. Amen. It's important because if you think that if you have enough faith, if you even if that you have the right mind, that that in and of itself is going to mean that you don't have opposition, then you're sadly mistaken. Yes. Yes. And Jesus said to his disciples, I, I give you power to tread upon serpents. But you must understand that in order for that to happen, you must encounter serpents. Mm. Mm. Jesus said, nothing shall by any means hurt you, but he didn't say that no one wasn't going to try. Amen. Amen. The fact is that when you're walking in God's purpose and in his plan, Nothing will be able to successfully yes. successful. oppose you. That's the key word. Amen. Amen. The enemy will oppose you. He yes, will try he will. Yes, he will. to block you yes. and me. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, he will not be successful. Amen. Somebody ought to say, Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. To them. To them. Amen. Now, in verse 8, he lays out how the enemy tried to obstruct him. Uh, and the work of God, he says, they did what? Conspired. And, and, and as a lawyer, I understand that in order for there to be a conspiracy, there have to be two 
or more individuals. You can't have a conspiracy with one. Amen. Go ahead. Plotting to do an unlawful thing. Uh -huh. The enemy will conspire. Yes, it will. See, it's not enough for, for, for this person to, to, to not like you and not to want to see you go for it, but that person will try to get someone else That's right. to get on board yes. with them yes. to conspire to do something that they should not be doing. Yes. Oh yes, don't feel unique and don't feel like you're special when the enemy conspires to, to harm you because it's par for the course. Yes. It is an indicator that you are walking in the will and in the purpose and the plan of God when the enemy begins to conspire against you. Amen. Minister Brown. Amen. And he also did something else. What's another word in there that uh, he conspired all of them together to come and to do what? Right. The enemy will fight yes, <laughs> against you. And I don't have to tell you that. Some of you are living that. Mm. My mother used to say, if you haven't uh, run into the devil, that must mean you're going in his direction. <laughs> you ought to run into the devil sometime, mother, on the chorus. Because that means that you are opposing him and he's opposing you and he will fight. But you need not be concerned about that because as I said, he will fight, but he cannot win. Amen. And you must take solace in that. Amen. But nevertheless, your enemy will conspire. Yes. He will fight against you as you try to build that wall. Yes. And what else did he do? The last word in that yes. verse eight: yes. hinder. Yes. To hinder. He will do everything in his power yes. to hinder you, to slow you down to trip you up, to depress you, to frustrate you, to confuse you. He will do whatever he can to hinder you. But don't you worry and don't you fret because that's part of the course. And our Lord and Savior has already promised that nothing shall by any means, what? Hurt you. Hurt you. Yeah. Amen. So I'm only on my second observation, which is you need to understand you're going to run into some opposition. Yes. Your enemy will oppose you as you set out to build the wall. Uh, let's go on now to verse 9 because this is powerful. So what should your response be? And I love that word nevertheless because the enemy is going to do what he's going to do. But that word, nevertheless, is a transition term. Yes, it is. Yes, so it let is. me tell you what I did. Uh -huh. <laughs> he did this, uh -huh. and he did that. But let me tell you what I did. Amen. Let me tell you what we did. Because it has to be a collective effort, right? Amen. What did he say? Nevertheless, we did what? Amen. We made our prayers to our God. Yes. Yes. Folks, that's powerful. If you can get your mind around that, that will change your life. You need to pray. Yeah. Men ought to always pray. Amen. Pray without ceasing. The effective prayer, the, 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 what is it? The, the prayers of the righteous does what? Availeth much. So the effectual for prayers of the righteous availeth much. So when the enemy comes out with his different missiles, darts, arrows, whatever he's shooting at you, physical, mental, emotional, mm -hmm. don't you neglect to pray. Amen. And I think it's important because that's the first thing that he lists in a list of things that he did, right? Mm -hmm. We prayed. Yeah. We came to Shabbat every Tuesday night. Amen. We got down on our knees and we called out to the Lord. It seemed ritualistic. It seemed routine. Sometimes we were tired. Sometimes we had 10,000 things going. But we pressed our way to the house of the Lord because we understood that there is power in prayer. We understood that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Oh, there are people, faces that we see. There are instruments that the enemy is using. But this thing that we are up against is spiritual in nature. Yes, yes it is. Yes. Lord. A 
And we've got to connect with heaven. We need a word from the Lord. We can't get it sitting in front of the TV for five hours at a time. We can't get it gossiping on the telephone for two or three hours at a time. We need to get in a sacred place. We need to get in a quiet place. We need to call on the name of the Lord because the word says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall, 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 shall. Be saved. Amen. 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 <laughs> Nevertheless, I love that word. Amen. Yeah, they did what they did. Yes. But this is what we did. Yeah. We prayed. Yeah. We called, we made prayers unto our God. And here's the other thing, folks. Mm. And, and, and it, it is a, it's a hybrid approach. And you know what I mean when I say hybrid? It's a combination. Mm-hmm. Your first response has to be a spiritual response. But you, you cannot stop there. If, if someone is literally trying to break in your house, you need to call on Jesus, but you also need to call 911. <laughs> Heavenly response and earthly response. If you know someone is trying to get you, if you know someone is trying to harm you, you need to set a watch. All right. Yes. I don't like the fact that you don't like me. I don't like the fact that you are trying to harm me. But you know what? You ain't gonna be up in my house. Amen. Because I gotta watch. Amen. Yes. All right. Amen. And here's the thing. Some only, so many of us are so reckless and so lackluster when it comes to this thing uh, with our spiritual walk. And we're trying to build back and, and build up our relationship with the Lord. And we know that the enemy has used and tried to use other people at different times to, to, to hinder us, yeah. to fight against us, to conspire against us. And we let those same people come running back up. Yes, Amen. To meaningful, intimate relationships with us. Amen. And we know that we need to set a watch. Yes. Let them in. Just let them yes. come back. Come back. Amen. Again and again. The enemy doesn't have to uh, uh, break in your house in the middle of the night. You open the door. Yes. Yes. I got some Kool Aid for you. <laughs> come on in. I know it's hot outside. Uh, come on. We pray and we call on the name of the Lord that we, right. we, we set a watch. Right. Watching you. Thank you. Amen. Watching you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Verse 9 further clarifies that. Because yes. sometimes we, you know, when things happen, when things happen immediately, we all can be watchful, right? Yes. Yes. But what happens over time? Yes. 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 You get slapped. Yes. I ain't seen him. I guess I can just go back to doing what I did. Well, glory, hallelujah. But he said we set a watch yes, yes. day yes. and night, which was perpetual. Yes. We've got to be sober perpetually. Yes. Peter tells us that we need to be sober and vigilant. Why? Because our enemy, the devil, does what? Goes about like a roaring lion. Yes. Seeking whom he may devour. The lack of sobriety. Yes. Well, well. Well, can be devastating. Yes, it can. Can be destructive in your life. Amen. Has been. Has been. All right. You set that watch. Yes. And you keep that watch. Yes. Watch night yes. and day. Yes. And day yes. and night. If Nehemiah was living today, he would have said something like this. We set that watch 24-7. All right. Yes. yes. 24 hours a day, yes. seven days a week, yep, that's it. 365. Amen. 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 Women, boys, and girls, we have to watch yes, we do. against the encroachment of the enemy. Because mm. you know what? As my father used to say, he's an implacable foe. He does not give up. No, he don't. He goes away and he regroups and he comes back. Yes, he does. You're assuming that it's over and he's regrouping. Yes, he's coming back strong. 
I think if we put this within the national context and the national conversation that we're having about civil rights and racism and all of that, we can see that stuff keeps coming back. We're building monuments, we're writing songs, we're having holidays, we've overcome, we haven't overcome. Amen. All right, so I hear somebody saying, stay on the message, Pastor Well, God. well, good. And then go on. Well. But I've made my third observation, and I want to now go over to verse 14. Mm. And I would say perhaps that one of the most critical thoughts that I want to convey to you today is that third observation that I just made. Mm -hmm. And I want to pose it as a question to you. Are you watching? Are you praying? But you go to verse 14. Mm. So then, and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not ye what? Afraid. Listen, folks. Here's my fourth observation. Mm. You can't do anything operating in fear. Amen. Okay. Amen. Do you know that the salutation, fear not, appears no less than 63 times in scripture? Mm. Fear, not. fear not. Don't walk in fear. Amen. John tells us in his epistle that fear, there's torment in fear. Yes, it is. There's torment yeah. and fear. And some of you, if you, and I don't need you to answer out loud. I just want you to think about it. Some of you have done some silly things, some <laughs> harmful things to yourself, acting in fear. Do not act in fear. So it's easy for you to say. All right. All right. Well, let me see what he says. Be not ye afraid of them. Remember, the Lord is what? I think it's so important for you to understand that the reason why you should not uh, uh, be in fear is, first of all, he says, remember. Just remember the Lord. Uh -huh. Remember who you're in relationship with. Amen. You know, the disciples forgot that when they were on the Sea of Galilee, I believe it was, when Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And he went back in the back of the boat and, and went to sleep, right? Uh -huh. And the waves came, right? Yes, they did. The water began to fill the boat up with water. And, and they were like, oh, yeah. is somebody going to wake him up? Right. <laughs> Me. And they're talking among themselves. Like, Can you believe he's sleeping? And they're thinking, oh, we're going to die. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. And Jesus stood up. And he said what? Peace. 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 Be still. Just call on him. And he'll stand up in your life. And whatever the circumstances or the issues that are, are menacing you and threatening you, he will stand up in your life and he'll speak to the circumstances and the issues and the problems and the troubles that you're confronting. And he will say, peace. But you got to remember who's on board. And so this is what Nehemiah was saying to the people of God. If you want to build something, if you want to establish something in the kingdom of God, you've got to keep in mind who you're dealing with, who you're in relationship with. You're in relationship with the true and living God. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the everlasting one, the Prince of Peace, the wonderful counselor, the name above all names, the King of Kings. He's on your side. Remember that he's great. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Isn't that what he says? Mm -hmm. That word great means uh, in terms of magnitude. Yes. Great magnitude. And he's terrible, not in the sense that we use it, but in the sense that he's awesome. Right. Yes. Right. 
and someone that should be respected and revered. God is awesome. We sing that song, don't we? Yeah. My God is yes, awesome. Yes, Do you believe that? Amen. Do you really believe that? So we shouldn't walk in fear, be not afraid, because God is great and he's awesome. What else did he tell him? He's great and he's awesome. And what is he going to do? He's going to fight. Is that what he said? Mm -hmm. Now look. When we, this kind of takes me to uh, my fifth observation. When we think about why we should work to build the wall, the, the wall being the relationship between us and God, why we should uh, labor in prayer, why we should walk upright before God, why we should be protective of the sacred things in our life. When we think about that, he, he tells his brethren, here's some things that you should think about in terms of why it's important to invest in your spiritual wall. He says, remember and fight for your your brethren. It ain't just about you. It's not just about you. Amen. Reject the philosophy and the theology that makes you think that the world uh, revolves around you. It does not. And we fight not just for our personal convenience and comfort, but we fight for our brethren, our kinfolk. Our family. Your family is your divine assignment, your divine appointment. You didn't become a, a Johnson by mistake, just happenstance. You didn't become a Fillmore by happenstance, a Neil, a Thomas, Amen. a Lee, a Williams, a Brown, a Jenkins. You did not. Amen. You were divinely assigned. Amen. And when you pray, and when you intercede, and when you think about what's important and what's significant, think about your kinfolk. All right, man. But Nehemiah said, and not only that, who else? Your sons. And your daughters. Amen. And your wives, and we can just broadly say our spouses. And what, what interestingly is last? Your houses, which is what? Property, stuff. Listen, man, it's not that we should pray and be concerned about stuff, but stuff has to have a certain priority in, in our lives. People, pray for people more than you pray for property. Care about people yes. more than you care about stuff. Yes. What are you fighting for? My son and my daughter, they're worth fighting for. Yes. Amen. Amen. For standing up. We talked about what courage is in Sunday school again. I used to think that courage means that you're not afraid. Mm. But I've been educated, I've been enlightened. Yeah. The courage is doing what is right, even though you may be afraid. Right. You're standing up. Something in your life, someone in your life, has to be important enough for you to stand up. Amen. Amen. Who or what is that important to you? Nehemiah tells us it should be our sons, it should be our brethren, it should be our wives, and our houses last. Now then, let me go on. We're coming to a close here. Verse 16, let's skip over to that. Are you there? Yeah. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both spears and shields and bows and harbingers and the rulers who were behind all the house of Judah. 
So what's important there is that there comes a time when we need to learn to multitask. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go to work today. I'm just going to pray. Uh, God told me to come off my job and just pray. Lord, really? Right, Lord. <laughs> I'm not, maybe he did. I can't say he did or he didn't. But when you're trying to build something, when you're trying to establish something, sometimes you have to be able to do more than one thing Amen. at a time. Yeah. You need to work uh -huh. and. and watch. That's Amen. They were building the temple, but they were also watching. Yes. And if you read further, and I'm not going to read for time's sake, but even the people who had, who were actually up there working, in one hand they had a, a hammer, and the other hand they had a sword. All right, man. Listen, it, it, it goes to the point of this that we need to understand that we're in a battle. Yes, we are. That we're in a warfare, and we're not going to just recklessly and 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 and, and um, somehow luck up on winning the battle. Amen. We have to be prepared. That's right. You fight. And what's key, and I hope you heard it, and and I don't mind being redundant here. Mm. If you already heard it, I apologize. I'll say it again. What's key here is that prayer is the, the initial thing that we lead with. Yes. It's the primary thing that came after the nevertheless. Uh -huh. Enemy's going to do what he does. Uh -huh. But our response has to be spiritual first. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, watch and what? Pray. pray. And pray why? Lest you know. That you enter not into temptation. Amen. My question uh, to you, uh, my sisters and brother, uh -oh. simple. Do you understand that we are in a battle? Yes, we are. Are you watching? Yes. And are you praying? Amen. Yes. You can't build anything if you're not willing to watch uh -huh. and pray. pray and if we go to the first observation, what was the first thing that we talked about? Have a made up mind. To do what? Work. Make, work. Mind work. Watch, pray, and work. And work. Amen. 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 Lord, will add a blessing. Amen.